Panda here and today I wanted to recommend 31 horror movies to watch this October but also into November and December and into next year because horror movies are not just for October. I have a list for you guys. It was really hard to choose just 31 of them because HBO Max does have so many great horror films but I tried to select some current ones, some older ones, some, you know foreign and American and a mixture of everything so please feel free to leave down below a list of movies that you love from HBO Max that I have not included here. So let's just get started. I've moved over so I can pop up the movie posters here. First up, I wanted to recommend American Psycho. This is a 2000s horror film. By the way, on my Shudder video, because I did this for Shudder too, I'll leave that link down below if you're curious, but all of the dates were messed up. So I hope that HBO is not the same. Maybe I should check. I think that these are accurate. So anyway, you guys know American Psycho is one of my favorite horror books ever written, so I had to include the movie, of course. This is about Patrick Bateman, who is either a crazy, mindless serial killer or a very, very uh, mentally ill individual, depending on your interpretation of the movie and the book, but um, a disturbing film nonetheless. By the way, these are in no particular order. Next up, I have The Conjuring. This is a 2013 horror film. This is a uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren go to help out a family who is being haunted by a demon, but I think it's creepy and, and fun to watch. Next up, we have The Devil's Rejects. This is a 2005 horror film, and I did include this in my Shutter recommendations as well because this is my favorite Rob Zombie horror film. It's about the Firefly family, and they just wreak havoc on anyone who gets in their way. It's just a family of serial killers. Next up, we have Disturbing Behavior. This is a 1998 horror film, and if you are a child of the 90s like me, then you know that these movies are so nostalgic. I love these types of films, and this one is about a group of, of High school students who find out that there's more going on in the town than meets the eye. Next up we have Eraserhead. This is a 77 horror film and honestly a film that just makes me feel gross every time I watch it which is why I think it's such a great film. It's basically a metaphor for the fear of becoming a father but it's so so much more than that. This movie is so weird and creepy and it just makes you feel uncomfortable. Next up we have 1973's The Exorcist because what is Halloween without a little possession. This is about Regan who ends up being possessed by a demon and they seek help from their local church to try to rid her from the demon. Next up we have Eyes Without a Face. This is a 59 French horror film and I believe that this movie is subtitles but correct me if I'm wrong. This movie is so good. I love this film. It's about a man who's feeling, well he's a doctor, and he's feeling really uh, guilty because he's accidentally led to the disfigurement of his daughter. So he ends up abducting young women and trying to steal their face to make his daughter presentable again, even though everyone thinks that she is dead. It's a great movie. I really highly recommend this one if you guys are into foreign films and okay reading subtitles. Next up, 1998, The Faculty. I told you that I love these types of movies. This movie is so nostalgic for me. This is like one of my favorite 90s films. And it's not just because everyone was in love with Josh Hartnett. It's about a group of aliens that comes down to take over the bodies of the people in town and a group of high school students try to put an end to it. Next up, we have The Fly. This is the 1986 version, although I believe that they have the original 50s version as well. But this is, well, they both are about scientists who um, end up mixing their DNA with a fly and becoming a monster. Next up, we have Freddy vs. Jason, 2003 horror film about Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. This one's just like a fun, bloody, good slasher, you know? Next up, we have The Haunting in Connecticut. This is a 2009 horror film and a horror film that I find myself revisiting every once in a while. It's about a family that moves into a new house and a young boy is very ill but is also starting to see things that might not be there. Next up we have Hollow Man. This is a 2000s horror film. You guys know I love Kevin Bacon and I love Hollow Man. This is a movie about a scientist who makes himself invisible but in the process drives himself a little crazy and this is based off of the H.G. Wells story. I think I actually did a movie verse book Verse movie on this one. So I'll leave that link down below. I have an American Psycho movie verse book. I'll leave that down below. Any movie verse books, I'll leave down below. Next up, we have Hostel, a 2006 horror film about Americans that travel abroad and accidentally get abducted into the human meat market. <laughs> this one's just a 
bloody good time. Next up we have I Am Legend. This is a 2007 horror film about, I guess it's about like a virus that changes most people into, they're not really vampires, they're more monsters, but it is based off of the Richard Matheson book I Am Legend and there is also a first movie called The Last Man on Earth which is fantastic. I think I did a movie first book first movie on this as well. Next up 1978, the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is about aliens who come down to snatch up the bodies of humans. Next up we have It, the 1990 miniseries. They also have the 2017 remake as well as It 2. I personally prefer the 1990s miniseries. I think that Pennywise is just a lot creepier. It'll always be Tim Curry for me. Next up, Night of the Living Dead. This is a 68 black and white horror film about zombies that rise from the graves to try to take over a town. Next up we have A Nightmare on Elm Street. This is a 1984 horror film about Freddy Krueger who ends up uh, murdering you if you fall asleep. We also have Wes Craven's New Nightmare. This is a 1994. So they, they do have um, A Nightmare on Elm Street 1, 2, 3, 5, Freddy's Dead, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and Freddy vs. Jason. So they got a ton of them on here, but also I wanted to recommend specifically Wes Craven's New Nightmare because I think this is maybe my favorite 90s horror film ever. I really love this film. This film is so nostalgic for me. It was like one of the first horror films that I really fell in love with as a kid. And you guessed it, it's about Wes Craven's new nightmare. Next up we have 1982's Poltergeist. This is about a family who's being harassed by a poltergeist. Next up, The Possession. This is a 2012 horror film and I think quite a creepy possession film considering like it's all been said and done before. It's about a young girl who gets a Dybbuk box. I think it's like at a garage sale and she ends up accidentally possessing herself as one does. Next up we have The Ruins. This is a 2008 horror film and although I do prefer the book much more, if you have read the book and you enjoy it, I definitely re recommend checking out the movie too. It's just kind of fun to see things brought to life. The characters are also like kind of swapped. I did a movie verse book on this too. <laughs> I'll leave that down below. It's about a group of uh, travelers that travel to Mexico and they end up being stuck on ruins because the indigenous people keep them there for a reason that they don't quite know, but they will soon find out. Next up, we have 1980s The Shining. This is about Jack Torrance, who brings his family to stay in the Overlook Hotel because he will be the caretaker through the off season and he goes a little mad. Next up, we have Vampire. This is a 1932 horror film. And I really love watching like very old horror films, kind of seeing where the genre began. And this one's about a young traveler who gets stuck at this like castle that has a lot of creepy stuff going on. But there are just some really awesome shots in this film. Next up, another 2000s film, we have What Lies Beneath. This is about a woman who is experiencing some paranormal activity. She tries to dig a little deeper and see what she can find. Next up, this is Funny Games. This is the 1997 English version, and I gotta say, I'm warning you now, this movie is not for everyone, but I personally do love this film. It's about two young people who go to very ritzy vacation homes and just wreak havoc on this neighborhood. Next up, we have 2019's Doctor Sleep. This is the sequel to The Shining, and I did enjoy the book, but there's something about this movie where Mike Flanagan had to like have a very delicate balancing act between the Shining horror fans, the book, and the Shining horror fans that are obsessed with the movie. And I just think that he did it so gracefully. And it really is a love letter to Stephen King and giving Stephen King the ending that he's been waiting for. And if you've read the book, The Shining, read the read Dr. Sleep and watched the movie, The Shining, I think that you'll probably be impressed with it as well. Next up, we have Misery. This is a 1990s horror film. This is um, from Misery, the book as well. This is a movie about Kathy Bates who abducts a writer and keeps him held hostage in her house. A great movie, fantastic novel. Next up, we have The Witch. This is a 2016 horror film. This is about a group of Puritans that are kind of like kicked out of their town and they have to forage and find their way on their own. And then they get overrun by like witchcraft. It's so creepy and fun. I personally like this movie. I don't know, I took a an English class about Puritan literature and it was just so interesting 
how fearful they were about just the outside world reflected in their literature and their fear of like one another and everything. It's just interesting to analyze from that perspective. So anyways, next up, I would like to recommend to you The Mummy. This is a 1959. And if you just want like a good old fashioned uh, mummy, this is the movie for you. This is about a mummy who is trying to uh, destroy the archeologists who have dug him up. He's pissed someone will come up. And you know what? I don't blame him because I feel the same way in the morning. I think that's all of them. That was 31. But I also wanted to tell you guys that this is kind of like a, a little extra add-in. It's not a movie. It's just like one or two minutes long, but it's called The Infernal Cauldron. And this is a 1903 silent French film. And it is so cool to watch. I'm telling you, it's just a few minutes long. And it's like these two little demons who throw people into this big cauldron and um, summon their spirits. It's such a fun little short. And it's just really cool, like the coloring that's used on there. Like I said, I love seeing where horror began. And this is, I mean, 1903, that's wild. So highly recommend that if you guys are into checking out like older stuff. But I'm telling you, there are so many great films on HBO Max. They even have like a whole section of the Omen movies. They have a whole section of Final Destination movies. They've got so much for you to watch. So I hope that this video has helped you figure out some films to enjoy this month for October and into, you know, fall and winter and then next spring and then also the summer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your favorite horror films from HBO Max down below and I will see you next time with another horror video. Bye guys!